that is on this rock that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's all there. He's actually saying, no, I'm going to go there. I'm going to defeat mm -hmm. Hades. Mm -hmm. And remember, Hades is the brother of Zeus. They're approaching Caesarea Philippi, mm -hmm. according to the sign, mm -hmm. which is nowhere near the Sea of Galilee. It's like 25, 30 miles north. Like they said, they were heading up toward Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. Driving 25 miles, that's one thing. They just walked. You're talking, you know, if you walk two or three miles an hour, that's what, 12, 13, I don't know. So it's multiple day journey. Or a super long day. Yeah. They're like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, yep. this is like, they're just trusting Yeshua and following him. And this is what it means to walk with the Lord. That's good. I'm at peace. John wanted to run to that. Hmm? You have to ask me how I am. I'm sorry. How are you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I do like this. Uh, you know, we're seeing them teach and listen and talk on the way. Yeah. We don't get a whole lot of like in the gospels of like, hey, while they were walking from here to here, they talked mm -hmm. about this. But again, like you're saying, they're walking 25 miles. Right. It's like there would have been a ton of conversation. And you know, some of the teachings that are written down may have been on the way, you For know. Sure. But it's like this this is a great visual of what life as a follower of Jesus right. for those, you know, whatever three years mm -hmm. was like. The Canaanite god Baal he used to be worshipped here. Actually, many places, but especially here. Why? The water. They regarded Baal as the god of rain. The spring poured us out of a cave in the side of the rock face there. The fountainhead of the Jordan. To sound out the depths of the spring, they let a rock down on a rope. Never reach the bottom. Welcome to the gates of hell. Mm. We're looking at Caesarea Philippi here, and mm -hmm. you've got two shrines. One is to the god Pan, mm. okay, which is that half goat, okay, half man, uh, creepy reality. Mm -hmm. Caesarea Philippi also had this temple to Zeus, hmm. okay, and Zeus is like understood to be God incarnate. Mm. Which is really interesting. Mm. And then they just mentioned Baal. They just mm. a little altar to Baal there. Because mm. uh, actually, the site goes all the way back to Alexander the Great. Okay. When it was first huh. uh, developed. But Zeus is just this development, actually, of Baal. Mm. So mm -hmm. Baal mm -hmm. becomes... Kind of morphs into... Zeus. Interesting. And so it's this similar pagan deity mm. that's this antithesis, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of the God of Israel. Interesting. It's so, it's gross that it's this God incarnate, mm -hmm. you know, ugh, it's, it's yucky. Yeah, wow. Are those goats were sacrificed in their temple? No. Goats? Something much worse. The word panic comes from the word Pan. Hmm. And th this is like a ancient Greek okay. myth. You know the Battle of Marathon, kind of this famous story of the man running 26.2 miles and okay. telling about the victory okay, yeah. of the Greeks over the Persians. And then he dies. <laughs> Which I always tell my marathon friends, do you really want to run that far? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> In the Greek mythology, Pan, mm. this goat demon, actually like causes panic among the Persians to help the Athenian wow. Greeks to victory. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. No, I, 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 if I had known that, I forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I really like this depiction of Caesarea Philippi. Yeah. Because you can go to the modern mm -hmm. 
archaeological site. It's yeah. a national park in Israel, and it looks like this, mm -hmm. you know, geographically at least. They didn't. They don't have the temples there, of course. Right. But you can even see it was like a cave kind of yeah. behind mm -hmm. this altar and temple to Pan on the left. Mm -hmm. And so they, I think they've done a good job of kind of depicting mm -hmm. what it could have looked like. And then, of course, they have this red <laughs> color. I was going to ask about that. What's that about? This red, I'll call it a Herodian mm -hmm. red. So Herod the Great you know, built all these different structures and he apparently loved the color red because you can see this red at Masada, mm, yeah. you know, this um, winter fortress. Mm -hmm. And Herod built this temple to Zeus in honor of Caesar Augustus, mm. which is why it's called Caesarea. Yeah. Philippi ends up being named after his uh, son. Mm. So, uh, Phil Herod, you know, mm -hmm. Philip Herod, mm -hmm. and a lot of Herods. Mm -hmm. It's cool to be able to, I mean, one, to see the site in Israel is amazing. And it's actually a really beautiful location. Yeah, it's water everywhere. Yeah, it's gorgeous. But then you have this just really gross, right. even feeling there. And so it's kind of cool to, like, overlay this on top of it mm -hmm. and kind of see the structures and even the Herodian red, like you're saying, and uh, to get a, a visual of what in the world was going on here. Yeah. yeah. Rabbi, this place. Respectfully, Rabbi, why did you bring us here? It's an abomination. <laughs> That's a pretty strong word, Andrew. Rabbi, doing Shiva? Should we avoid dark places out of fear? Or should we be light to them? Like Simon and Judas were on their mission. You think my cousin would be afraid of this cave? <laughs> Do you think he would be so appalled by what happens in that temple over there that he couldn't stand to be in this place? Who do people say the Son of Man is? I love this setup here mm -hmm. because he's taken them to this, you know, such as pagan place, Gentile city. Mm -hmm. It's in the region of the Bashan. Hmm which is talked about all throughout the Tanakh. Yeah. You know, this is like a, it's known for its, you know, just pagan altars all around. You know, mm. Mount Hermon is close by, which mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, a high place. Yep. Right? Yep. So we know that that's where uh, different pagan cults love that. For sure. So he's intentionally coming here and then asking what? This identity question of, who do you say that I am mm -hmm. in the context of mm -hmm. this evil? And Bashan even is known as like the place of the serpent. No way. In Ugaritic, because it goes way huh. back. Baal, yep. but now it's manifest in Zeus. Mm -hmm. And he goes, so you've got this incarnate apost uh, uh, apostasy, you know, yeah. in Zeus yeah. and Caesar right. and, and Pan and like, Baal, I was like, you've kind of got it all. He's like, well, who do you say that I am? Mm. It's important to realize that. You could just skim through this and be like, oh, okay, and then they went here, and then they mm -hmm. did this. And then it's like, well, knowing the context makes it way right. bigger of a deal, especially yeah. going to this place. Mm -hmm. And I like how they're portraying how uncomfortable the disciples are. Totally. They're like, this, this is unclean. This is gross. Right. This is it. Like, Abomination. We know what, yeah, what we know what they're doing in there. Like, mm -hmm. it's a horrible, disgusting idolatry. Yeah. He's taking them to the heart of the heart idolatry. Right. Uh, some say you are Elijah, the one who preaches repentance. Hmm. Others say Jeremiah, because he was rejected by the leaders of his time. And still others say one of the prophets, those that spoke on God's behalf. Okay, wh what are we gonna have to do, huh? Cast lots? Nathaniel, this is your moment. Be yourself. Some say John the Baptizer. Which obviously isn't true. Okay. Well, that's everyone else. But who do you say that I am? You? You are the Christ. The son of the living God. These carved statues of Baal and Pan 
and other idols that we passed? They're dead and decaying, but we worship a living God, and you... You are his son. I love that they're showing Peter uh, being emotional here, yeah. or Simon being emotional here, yeah. of like this, this moment where he mm. said, well, my father's revealed this to you. Yeah. And he's like, you are the Messiah. Mm -hmm. First says that, which is this, it's really this kingly declaration. Yeah, the he's anointed saying, one. Yes. Yeah. You are the true king of Israel. Yeah. That's what he's really saying. For sure. You are, because again, who built this site? Herod, mm -hmm. who is this good. false king of Israel. Yep. Then you've got this false king of the empire, mm -hmm. Caesar. Right. Right? And he's saying, no, you are the true king wow. of Israel. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, just even that first part of the statement mm -hmm. is a huge statement in and of right. itself. You're the mm -hmm. Messiah, the anointed one, the anointed king, mm -hmm. the true king exactly. of Israel. Yeah. But the phrase goes on. It doesn't stop there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You're the son of the living God. Yeah. And it's like, even they, they, they kind of tease that out a little bit right. in what he's saying here. But like, these right. gods are dead. Mm -hmm. This stuff isn't real. These right. are car they're carving. I mean, and, and that's... that's right. Throughout scripture, it's like those who make idols will become like them. Mm, that's good. Right? Yeah. Right? And he's saying, no, you're yeah. the, the son of the living God. Right. Massive statement. Caesar is not the son <clears throat> of God. That's good. He is yeah. not God. Right. If you want to go deeper in your understanding of God, the Bible, and why Israel matters today, you can become a grafted ambassador. You'll get our five-week online course for free. You'll be able to join our monthly exclusive live Zoom. Exclusive. And we'll even send you a grafted trucker hat. That's right, so click on the link in the description below. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. All your life, you've been called Simon, one who hears. But today, I call you Peter. Rock. Name changes again is about identity. Yeah, that's good. And I love it because she was seeing Peter for who he really mm. is. Yeah. Right, yeah, and what is going to become, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, his intended destiny mm -hmm. yes. is to what? It's to be a rock. That's awesome. Yeah. To be this foundation of the new covenant kingdom mm -hmm. that's being birthed through Yeshua Himself. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yeah. they're His children, right here, mm -hmm. and He's discipling them into this new covenant uh, reality. Yeah. And so a name change is, is warranted in that sense. Right. And it reminds me of like the original name change in scripture, mm -hmm. which is Abram mm -hmm. or Avram to mm -hmm. Abraham, mm -hmm. which he goes from, no, you're not just a father. You're to be a father of what? Nations. Many yeah. nations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, I think mm -hmm. there's that play is happening here too, because why? Because the new covenant kingdom. Yeah is going to be birthed out of what? Mm. Israel and the Jewish people. Yeah. Peter and the boys. Yep. Ephesians uh, 2 says it's built on the foundation yeah. of the prophets and apostles. Exactly. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeshua being the chief mm. cornerstone, right? Yep. But then the new covenant kingdom is built on top of that. That's so good. Yeah. I mean, that's what's happening here. And there's mm -hmm. a name play because Peter means rock, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I just love that this is in complete uh, continuity even yeah. with going back to Abraham because right. he said, well, I want many nations For sure. to be a part of this. For sure. The Lord does say to, uh, I can't remember if it's Isaac or Jacob, but he says mm -hmm. that you will be a kahal goyim, mm. meaning you will be a community of yeah. nations, Yeah, which is really interesting. Goyim <laughs> means nations right. in Hebrew. Right. And kahal is like the name for gathering mm -hmm. uh it's what's translated sometimes as church or synagogue or you know it's like this gathering of people right from the nations but that's the purpose of god calling the patriarchs 
from the beginning. Absolutely. And so this is just a continuation of that now in this new covenant Mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. So I love what you're saying. Well, I like what you said. It's a name is identity, right? And the identity here is you guys are going to go be a light to the nations. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, the Great Commission's coming up soon, (laughs) right? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Just a couple chapters later here. (laughs) It is on this rock that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is a place of death. And I brought you here to tell you that death has no power to hold my redeemed people captive. I love that. Death has no power to hold my redeemed people captive. True. So, (laughs) because he's saying hell here, but the Greek word is Hades. Mm -hmm. And the Hebrew word is Sheol. Mm. And... Hades is from Greek mythology, actually. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is interesting where the Bible actually has Greek mythology in it. <laughs> <laughs> and But Hades is the holding place of the dead. Yeah. And actually, it becomes personified. So Hades is this, like, God, mm. you know, who's personifying death and personifying this holding place of the dead. Mm. And But then Yeshua is saying, but the gates of Hades will not prevail against it, and the redeemed mm. won't be able to be held captive yeah. in Hades. Right, right. This is a big That's deal. Good. That's good, yeah. And this, I, I think they have to, be, they don't, they have, I think, no idea what he's saying. Right, <laughs> right? because he, he's talking about the fact that when he's going to be the firstborn from the dead. Right. Right? Right. I mean, it's really interesting because, Greek mythology, Mm -hmm. they have these different, you know, legends, myths, where different gods go down to Hades Mm -hmm. and try to, like, set the captives free or bring people back up from the dead. Huh. Because I live, you also will live. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The end of Matthew 16, then he says he's gonna actually die and be raised on the third day. Oh, so he goes he goes all the way there. Yeah, he's he's saying it. Wow. This whole, he who has an ear, let him hear. Right. right. Right? It's all there. He's actually saying, no, I'm going to go there. I'm going to defeat mm-hmm. Hades. Mm. And remember, Hades is the brother of Zeus. I mean, he's, he's going right after mm-hmm. the principalities, the powers, all the Greek. Yeah. Because Greek mythology, there's like some truth to some of the evil and the sure. understanding of sure. what's happening here. Right. And he's saying, yeah, and I'm going to go after all that, and I'm going to defeat all that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do exactly uh, what my father sent me to do. Right. Which was to set the captives free. Yeah. Which, of course, sounds a lot like what? Coming out of Egypt. Right. Oh, right. Like that's just who he is. Mm-hmm. It's what he does. And in, and in and in that coming out of Egypt, there was a defeating of the gods. Exactly, of that's what Egypt, it said. It's right? like, that's good. And then this is this defeating of yeah. the gods of the underworld, right. however you want exactly. to say it. He is yeah. the King of Kings and yeah. the Lord yeah. of Lords. He said, "I saw Satan fall like lightning, right, mm-hmm. and defeats the principalities and powers. And how does he do it?" <laughs> He does it, so it's interesting because a lot of times this Matthew 16 passage, mm-hmm. people will use it in terms of spiritual warfare, about binding and loosing. Oh, yeah. And it's true, and I think it's a it's a secondary kind of application. I mm-hmm. think the primary understanding is about authority mm-hmm. that we are talking about. But Yeshua's understanding of high-level warfare, of spiritual warfare, is this right here. Yep. It's humility. Yep. Right? It yeah. says, he says, I could call down legions of angels, but that's not how he does it. That's not how he sets the captives free. Mm-mm. He gives himself, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. that's how he does that's it, how you know? He does it. It's love and humility. It's love and humility. And that's how, and then he comes up out of the grave, mm. you know? Mm. I mean, that's this true humility. Yeah. And what's amazing is that. Uh, in Ephesians 3, he says, when Jew and Gentile come together 
in unity. Mm-hmm. He says that, that what? That's this demonstration to the principalities yeah. and powers of the manifold wisdom of God. Yeah, yeah. That, that actually our unity mm-hmm. is high-level warfare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? Because it's this humility required. Wow when we come together in unity. Mm. There is no unity without humility Mm because you got to come together and love people that you maybe would never have wanted to love before. (laughs) Right. Right? Right. It demands that unity, and he knows that, Mm -hmm. and so he's putting it as this requirement for us to what? We we all say when we be conformed into the image of Yeshua. Right. Right, right, mm-hmm. and he's saying, "Yeah, it's it's gonna have to happen, and that means you gotta what? Love your brothers as yourself. Exactly. Second commandment, the fullness exactly. of second commandment, love. And that's what that's what Paul's talking about in Philippians two of this. Have the attitude of Messiah, mm-hmm. and and consider others as more significant exactly. than yourselves. And that's that's this attitude of Yeshua right. to lay down." Everything, yeah. in humility and in love, mm-hmm. unto right. Mm, that's so. That's exactly what Yeshua did. So good. Mm, amen. I just got saved. Now, nah, right. <laughs> you have the authority to declare the truth to others that I am declaring to you. That the repentant have a place in the kingdom of heaven. You have confessed that I am the Christ. And you will influence many others to make the same confession in time. But I will explain more later. What's happening here is what I would call a kingdom transfer of authority. That's good. Yeah. I mean, he, he's giving, what? He says the keys of the kingdom. I've given you the keys mm-hmm. of the kingdom. Well, what are keys? Mm-hmm. They're authority. Authority, yeah. To open to close, right? He says here to bind and to loose, mm-hmm. and what is binding and loosing uh, in you know actually in a Jewish context, uh, it means like allowing and forbidding. Mm. Like it's really interesting because they were talking about the Sanhedrin, which is the Jewish authority at the time, right? And then what's happening is. Yeshua is transferring the authority from the Sanhedrin to yeah. Peter and the boys. Yeah. I mean, it, and it only makes sense because to have the, the authority of the new covenant kingdom, mm-hmm. you have to follow the new covenant king. For sure. For sure. Like you, you can't yeah. walk in authority mm-hmm. of the kingdom if you don't believe in the king. Yeah. It's good. So that's why there has to, there's this necessary transfer, mm-hmm. I think is why he's making such a big deal of yeah. this. And you know what? I just realized that maybe they, I'm assuming they meant to do this. Earlier scene, Yosef is getting dressed and stuff, and he pulls out a key. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> keys to the kingdom, authority transfer. Mm-hmm. And keys mean authority. Mm-hmm. And in this Jewish first century, second century Jewish context, we know because in the Mishnah, it actually says that the keys of the kingdom mm-hmm. were transferred from the Sanhedrin to the rabbis. So we actually have a very similar language huh. in rabbinic literature arguing that the authority was transferred from the Sanhedrin to the rabbis. Mm-hmm. And here, mm-hmm. And you could also see this in other passages. Mm-hmm. It says that, I think Yeshua is clearly saying that this authority is transferring mm. to these new covenant disciples. Totally, totally. And it's it's cool to too to see after his resurrection, he's saying all authority has been given to me, right? In Revelation, we see him. He's saying, "I hold the keys of death and Hades." Right? Exactly. It's like he is the one with all authority. Yes. He gives his disciples authority. Yes. They right. spread the gospel, spreading his kingdom rule exactly. and authority. It's just, right. it's, it's a beautiful plan. <laughs> right. And in some sense, you have Peter as the first one mm-hmm. who is acknowledging that Yeshua is the king. Yeah. Right? right. The rightful king of yep. Israel. Right. And, this, and it, so we ha- now have a human mm-hmm. or humans here 
that are acknowledging mm. who Yeshua is. Mm. And when that happens, yeah. then like you just said, he is now able to what? Ambassadorial role. Give act, them yep, the authority, yep, right? Because yep. they've acknowledged him as right, the king. Right. And so then he can now what? endorse them as his ambassadors. Exactly. Hey, if you like our videos, don't forget to become a Grafted Ambassador. Click on the link in the description below. I think that looked like a goat head, didn't it? Sure did. Sure did as they were panning. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs>